California churches have also been struggling with COVID restrictions and pushing back against prohibitions on indoor services. And we are joined now by attorney Matt Staver, the founder of Liberty Council. He's arguing a case on behalf of Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena, California. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. I want to ask you, you received a boost from the Supreme Court, which told the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals to reevaluate its decision against the church in light of a similar decision made in New York. And and that's the good news. But the bad news, of course, is that cases in California are surging. What is your argument to the court as to why churches should be able to meet? Well, first of all, these restrictions of no worship that cover 99 percent of California actually go as far back as July the 13th. And the no worship also includes no worship in your home or Bible study in your home with anyone who doesn't live there. These are not recent restrictions. They're going back to mid-July. And that's what has been happening in California. At the same time, California governor has all these so-called essential businesses and similar congregating activity that he allows with either no restriction or very limited restrictions compared to places of worship. So we've had two major cases from the Supreme Court, one on Thanksgiving Eve and then ours a week later, Harvest Rock Church and Harvest International Ministry, in which the court was very, very clear. The Constitution cannot be just simply set aside and have this discriminatory treatment against churches and places of worship. And you could not have a stronger opinion coming from the U.S. Supreme Court. In our case, they granted our petition, set aside all the lower court orders, and they've given them a roadmap. This is the roadmap. You need to follow it. And when you follow this roadmap, there's one destination that is inevitable. These restrictions in California are even worse than New York, and they violate the First Amendment. How concerned are you about the precedent that these COVID restrictions on churches are setting? What are we looking at potentially post-pandemic uh, if people become used to the government really clamping down on churches like this? I think it really sets a terrible precedent that even during a time of crisis, you can put a pause button on the Constitution. The Supreme Court clearly said that's not the case. We're not going to give the Constitution a sabbatical. And what I think we've seen happen with Governor Gavin Newsom in California and other governors, they've gotten drunk on the power that they have to issue these executive orders. And they don't even acknowledge the First Amendment. They believe that places of worship churches are not essential. And so they give them discriminatory treatment and throw them very few crumbs from the table while they dine with other people and spend $15,000 gathering together with other people for a birthday party. And yet the people of California, in particular, the churches are hurting. It's not only a constitutional right to meet that these governors are violating, but churches are now more essential than ever because be due to this pandemic, you hear the stress on people's voices and you see it in their eyes. Domestic abuse, child abuse, child pornography, drug and alcohol use have all skyrocketed. Depression, antidepressant drugs, and even suicide and now the church is there to be able to minister to people. And you can't do that on a podcast. It is essential to gather together to encourage the community. Churches have always been essential, but they're more essential than ever. All right. And we have just about 30 seconds. I'm interested in your opinion on the attorney general of California, Xavier Becerra, who's uh, leading the charge against Harvest Rock and is, is now the nominee for uh, Health and Human Services Secretary. Well, he's not only leading the charge against Harvest Rock, but he also started the criminal indictment against Sandra Merritt for doing the undercover investigation that revealed Planned Parenthood trafficking in human baby body parts. He has blood on his hands, and it's unbelievable that he would be tapped by Joe Biden to head up the Health and Human Services, where he can continue to push his radical uh, pro-death, pro-abortion agenda and anti-religious freedom to uh, add to that as well. All right. Matt Staver with Liberty Council, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.